three, we are on. Okay, let's let's allow our lovely customers in. Barbara, you're there as well. Don't worry, I'm sure she's there. Yeah, she's there. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Hello. Hey. Welcome to our Easter class. Lovely to see you. Hello, Sarah. Welcome. Everybody, Hi. welcome. Well, it's definitely very nearly Easter. I've been in my Easter uh, mode by cooking batches of hot cross buns this week. So I'm really excited to show you how um, how easy it is to make them in the Thermomix. Um, obviously, they're in the shops everywhere and they're, they're fairly inexpensive, but actually the quality that we can make in our Thermomixes are uh, so much, so much better than the shop bought ones. So I really want to encourage everyone um, to be making hot cross buns at some point this week. Um, so my name's Ellie and I'm from um, East London. Uh, we've got Fabrizio, who's from North London in Mill Hill, and we've got Barbara, who's in uh, Hither Green in South East London. So we're three advisors that span um, London. Uh, so we are really excited that you're joining our call today, and we're going to show you three different dishes from around the world. Um, I'm going to be starting off by showing us how to make hot cross buns. Um, which are quite English, but they're probably all around the world. Um, and then um, Fabrizio will show us how to make um, a delicious um, broad bean uh, sauce for our pasta and salmon. Uh, it's an Italian recipe, so that's great that we've got Fabrizio, our native Italian, to uh, talk us through the recipe. And then Barbara is going to be making some uh, Easter bread, which every country in uh, Middle Europe seems to claim it as their own. Um, so it's universal. Um, so we've got lots of things to show you this morning. Where's everybody from? If we could just put in the chat, that'd be great to see kind of where in the country we span. London, Norway. Wow, Tanya, that's so exciting. <laughs> Essex, lovely Matthew, thank you. Laverston, oh, in Watford. <laughs> That's great. And I think most of you are um, already owners of a TM6. Have we got any, any other models here, TM5? You can make all the recipes, whatever machine you have, but obviously our TM6 is the most uh, jazzy one, which we're really excited about. And actually we've got a great offer on at the moment, which is a 0% um, finance offer, which means that actually if you have any friends or family who perhaps might find it difficult to invest uh, all at once in the machine, uh, in the Thermomix uh, TM6, and um, are put off by kind of a finance plan, when actually now is a really great time. They've got until Wednesday, the 31st, um, to buy a Thermomix for only £95.75 a month for 12 months. So that's a really great way to make the TM6 much more accessible to um, anyone. Great. I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes for other people to join and then we'll get get baking. <laughs> so we've got two. Obviously, we've, oh, Fabrizio. I was saying absolutely. Yes. Get ready. I can't wait to see your photo of cross band. Um, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad that we can't. Um, Zoom isn't quite technical, technical savvy yet to kind of um, zoom the flavors and the spices of the hot cross buns because honestly my kitchen already smells amazing and that's just from having the oven on. And <laughs> um, just before we get started, I can see there's about 15 um, uh, participants at the moment. Just before we get started, um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Um, many of you are regular attendees to our classes. Um, so thanks again 
for joining this class as well. Um, because most of you are regulars, you probably already know, uh, or you have noticed that our team leader and Kida is not actually here today. Um, the reason for that is because she's not feeling very well today. So we've um, decided to carry on with the class. So they're all here. So please forgive us for any technical glitch um, that we might be occurring, uh, but we do our best to carry on as usual. And um, we wish and keep all the best and we'll see you later. Okay, so shall we get started then, Lisa? Yeah, great, that'd be wonderful. Um, so hopefully uh, you all know um, how to find uh, recently cooked on our settings. I love the recently cooked because you can just click on that and as I said, I've been making quite a few batches of hot cross buns this week. And my, my children broke up from school yesterday, so it's a really nice treat to kind of take into the staff room. Um, so they were very popular. And um, so hot cross buns, there are a few on Cookie Doo um, from around the world, but I'm just using the standard hot cross bun recipe for us today. Um, and I'm just gonna say start cooking. And obviously I've got my, my bowl nicely greased for my um, dough, which we'll be able to tip out into. And then all you need to do is add the butter. Doesn't say soften, so it can be just straight from your fridge. Um, mine happens to be out of the fridge. And 300 grams of milk. And obviously every, all liquids are measured in grams. There we are. It's very satisfying when you get an exact 300 grams there. So <laughs> there we are. And that's just going to um, cook for two minutes. It's going to heat the uh, milk and melt the batter. And that just gives the um, hot cross buns that really kind of milky flavor. Um, it's very soft dough. Uh, they're very uh, squidgy. I um, has anyone actually made hot cross buns before in their Thermomix? No, I can see yourself going, no, no. Oh, well done, Kerry. Did they turn out well? Were they good? Ah, yes, they are. They are divine. I um, became, I've been a uh, Thermomix owner for um, seven years, but I only became an advisor last year and when I got my um, TM6 suddenly obviously you have the cookie dough or a cookie dough all on the screen and it makes it just so easy so last Easter I was like right hot cross buns and actually it took me about three goes to get them perfect and I couldn't understand why and actually I was trying a different flour I was thinking I was getting it wrong but as we all know following a cookie dough recipe is so easy it had to be my yeast so just a word of caution, um, you can use fresh yeast or um, as I'm using, uh, just this packet dry yeast. There's quite a few different um, brands. There's Allison's, this is a Dove's Farm. And I kept using this because I was like, it's in date, it's fine, it's fine. It can't be the yeast, it must be the flour. And actually um, you've got to use, even if it's in date, if you've had it open for more than two months, you've just got to discard it because it just won't um, be the rising agent that you need. So that's really important. I bought one especially for this week. So it's fresh, it's open. And, you know, this year, first batch, perfect. So, um, yeah, just just bear in mind for your, for your yeast. So you've just got eight seconds left on the clock there. And then we'll continue with our recipe. So now I'm obviously going to add the um, uh, bread flour, strong white bread flour, any brand will do. This is, this is my better stuff, but I've been using little own brand and that's been absolutely wonderful. So flour is very inexpensive. Um, so sometimes it's nice to go for a really nice one. Um, and you just need 600 grams of that. So I'm just going to pour that in. Ellie, how long do those um, buns last in your household with your kids around? Uh, <laughs> about, <laughs> yeah. Well, this batch is going to make 16. Um, so obviously you can't, you can't double the recipe. So if you want to make double that quantity, you just quickly make two batches one after another. And hopefully you can see that's so easy. Um, but 50 grams of sugar. Yeah, they're very popular, especially just when they come out the oven. Just leave them a couple of minutes just to kind of set and then they just sort of go. People don't need to toast them. You don't need to put hot butter on them. You know, they just 
devour them. Um, but obviously the good thing about hot cross buns is you can keep them for quite a few days and just keep toasting them and um, putting butter on. Or uh, Sarah, who's on the call uh, here, she once gave me a hot cross bun with butter and I think it was brown sugar sprinkled on the top, which was very delicious. <laughs> So I've got added my um, uh, sugar, and I'm just now putting the important yeast factor in, but I just need to get my um, measuring spoon just to make sure I get it exactly. Ellie, Ellie Hello, when, you do, when you do that sprinkle of um, sugar, you need a bit of cinnamon mixed in with it. And it's, best with, and it's best with granulated sugar. Oh, sorry. And then it crisps up very, very well. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I just completely got that all wrong. So two teaspoons, <laughs> two teaspoons of um, uh, dry yeast, or it says 20 grams of fresh yeast. And you can do that. It's quite easy to get from most bakeries. We'll happily sell you a little bit of fresh yeast. Um, it's very inexpensive. Um, and then I've got my cinnamon. Just two teaspoons. And the, I took them, as I say, put them into school yesterday and everyone really commented on how kind of really the spices come through on um, these. So it's one teaspoon of um, mixed spice as well as the cinnamon. And the nutmeg. And the teaspoon of sea salt. Let's pop that in there. And there's one large egg, so just if you use medium, just make sure you um, have a large egg for this. That will just, it just needs that to bind it all together. And then we're just going to mix that. Just for 20 seconds, just combine all those spices into the flour. Obviously there's quite a lot of flour there. Um, 600 grams, you just need to get it all like, nicely mixed. But as we know about our thermomixes, it's really easy just to whack it all in and it will mix it up for us. And then we're just going to, it's going to knead it. So that's just going to knead it for three minutes, which is really great. Yes. It's only three minutes, yes, and actually then I'm going to be adding in um, all the fruit and we're, we're going to be adding the recipe calls for sultanas and um, mixed peel and raisins, but obviously if you don't like those things, you can kind of add the quantities, change the quantities, that's obviously, as we know, the great thing about um, a cookie dough recipe, it's there, it's been tested, but if we want to change it and alter it in any way, we absolutely can. Fantastic. So how long do um, custard dough be proving then? Oh, how long do we need to prove it? Sorry, yeah. just the other thing. Um, we will then be proving it for uh, three hours, two to three hours in your airing cupboard. So obviously we won't make you wait on the call for that long. Um, yeah. I've obviously got one I prepared <laughs> earlier. Um, so you just need to sort of be a little bit thoughtful in the terms of, you know, when you wake up, you know, maybe get on with the dough and then you've got that kind of time, you know, two hours to prove it. And then once you, you've done that, you then actually pull it into 16 balls um, and then that just needs another hour. Um, so okay. you've kind of just got to, in your mind, kind of be planning for kind of a three hour prove. Yeah. Um, but obviously okay. you can, and actually, the one I made, I've proved it since last night. So it doesn't matter how wow. often you prove it, really. Um, so you can just fit it in around you, but you'll see they've it, it's okay. proved wonderfully. So uh, <laughs> I won't spoil it by showing you now. We have to wait. <laughs> so just one minute left. And obviously, the kneading, um, it's doing exactly what it would do as if you were doing it by hand. So it's kind of um, folding it and then with the when when it stops it's kind of rotating your um, dough inside so it, it can get that kind of action so it's, also, yeah, it's not just doing it the whole time 
Absolutely, it's one of the periods of uh, demo-weeks. So you don't actually um, have to do the meeting yourself and you know, it's nice and clean. There's no mess in the kitchen and uh, you know, life is made easy, easy for you. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. If anyone has any questions at any point, just pop them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, we're here to help. We want to, to offer you that five-star service that uh, Volvec is proud of. We've got the chat going and uh, I can see there probably was an issue with my sound, but I could hear from Okay. Great, so we now just add our uh, 70 grams of raisins. Oh, I should have showed you that lovely kind of dough in there. Um, 70 grams of sulcanas, my mix peel. Mix peel lasts for ages, so don't worry about that. <laughs> I think this was from last year, still tastes delicious. Um, and then we're just going to obviously knead that in for um, a minute. And don't, don't be kind of nervous when it sort of does this bit of a jolting noise. It's just kind of trying to get under the, um, the weight of the dough and then it, then it will go. So don't worry about that. Um, just getting it in. What it will ask you to do is just tip it out um, onto a fl slightly floured surface and just to incorporate those kind of um, dried fruits to make sure it's kind of evenly uh, spaced and that won't take very long. I can see we have a few people who were last week, who attended last week. Uh, chef's class, um, and that was a very popular one. And for those of you who didn't attend, um, we had two colleagues on our team who happened to be the chefs, um, and they, they actually the owners, they already have a team, um, advice and enjoy our team um, to, to earn their second demo mix, and um, that proves how recruitment is actually um, growing and how we are um, seeing many more people join our team of advisors. And um, also along the possibility of um, joining as a non-owner, we also recruit as a non-owner. So for those of you who are interested in uh, you know, change of career and becoming us alongside uh, your full-time job or something, you know, give it a thought and get in touch with one of us and we can give you all the information you need. Um, so should you wish to join our team, we're always happy um, to welcome new newcomers. Over to you, Amy. Thank you, Fabrizio. <laughs> so um, here's my dough, if you can see it. Um, it's beautifully warm. Um, I don't know if you just saw me, um, for those who haven't made bread or dough before, um, obviously it can get a little bit stuck in the bowl. You just need to um, twizzle the blade from the bottom and give it a wiggle, and then it just very nicely kind of comes out. Um, obviously, if you want to get the, the last, last scraping, then you can just use your um, spatula to get that out. But here's my dough. It's really um, nice and warm and I can smell all the spices and I'm just kind of just kneading it just a little bit by hand, just to make sure all those um, uh, berries and um, berries, dried fruit is incorporated. And then I'm gonna pop it into my um, greased uh, bowl. And then I'm going to, the recipe says to use cling film, but I don't actually like using cling film. So I use this kind of silicon uh, mat just to pop over the top there. And I'm gonna put that in my airing cupboard for the next couple of hours. Um, and then this is my blue Peter bit. We get this. And actually another way, if you don't like using cling film um, or you think it's a bit fiddly, you can just prove it um, the second time in a um, big plastic bag. So I've done that. And this is what they look like. Oh, wow. Which is, they really grain. So, I mean, that was just the last, um, the last uh, 
um, hour, basically. So this morning at nine o'clock, I went to my airing cupboard or, um, yeah, if you don't have an airing cupboard, sort of anywhere warm in your house, um, you know, you probably know where the warmer spots are, then that's absolutely fine. Um, you just need it to double in size. Um, and I came down and the uh, bowl was kind of wonderfully almost overflowing and you just knock it out. Um, you just kind of get all the air out and then you divide it into 16. Now, what I recommend, you can use a knife. This is um, a kind of dough scraper. And I just got the dough and I just cut it in half and then half again and then half again and half again. So then it's very easy to get your 16 uh, very um, evenly kind of spaced. And yeah, they've really, um, really grown, which I'm really pleased about. It just, you just need to have quite a large tray, which is why I'm using my oven kind of tray. Um, you just need them about two centimeters apart and then they kind of fill the place and you'll see, I'm just going to do the, when we do the crosses on them, before we put them in the oven, it'll be really easy to do the crosses on there because we're just going to do that. So I'm just going to quickly do that now. Obviously, if you don't have a second bowl, you do have to wash that one up. But lucky for us, I've got there. So everything I've said, it's just in the instructions, which is very easy. Any, any of you, are you there? I think you froze. Okay. So, I'm going to do that. And it says 40, she's just going to double it because I want to get really nice, strong crosses on, um, on my back response. And then just a little bit of sugar, just so it and sweetens it so you can. I think we lost Ellie. Ellie, if you're back with a bit of connection, just um, let us know. Otherwise, I'll start my pasta recipe um, and um, we'll get back to you as soon as you're back home. Yeah? Okay. So, the reason I'm making this pasta is because um, for two reasons. Um, quite a few customers have been asking about um, how to make pasta in the Thermomix. And, um, and also, um, I chose this actually this particular dish, which is pasta with broad bean sauce and salmon, um, because it's something that can be uh, vegetarian, uh, pescatarian, um, or vegan. So you don't have to actually use salmon if you're vegan, uh, but you can just um, use the, the broad bean. And for this particular recipe, you can use fresh broad beans, or if you can't find them, you can also use uh, frozen broad beans. Obviously, you need to be yourself certified to use them. So, I'm going to start straight away by adding uh, a shallot. And um, stop this just for a few seconds. So, speed six. And then six onions. 30 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Right. It's quite hard to hear, to hear you, Fabrizio. Is it still hard to hear me? Yeah, it's quite hard to hear you. You okay. sound like you're pretty far away. Oh, okay. I'll try to move the. I'll see if I can improve the connection during the, the, the cooking of the. Of the sauce. Okay. Okay, I've got three minutes sauteing the, the onion and the and the oil. And uh, what I'll do, I'll try to solve my connection um, issue with my earphones. Uh, if you want to get started on it, you can bother and come back to me uh, in a minute, please. Sorry, Barbara, can I just get on to just show the crosses and then um, 
and then I can get them in the oven so we can see them at the end. Um, so, is that okay, Barbara? Hopefully, great. Thank you. Um, I actually, yeah, I actually did, you just did that paste in the bowl, but actually um, you just need to put a bowl on top. So that's why it's great having the Thermomix because you can um, really easily see what you've done wrong and you can just go back. I'm always going back just to check I've done something right. Um, so I'm just putting my bread flour in. As I say, I'm just making it, um, the crosses a bit stronger. So I'm just gonna put my water in and then a little bit of sugar. And then I'm just gonna make a paste. And what you need to do is get a piping bag or if you piping bag and you just like so. And actually here's one I've got in a cup and then you can really easily just spoon in your mixture. So then you've got this really easy way to pipe. And then if I can just move this over like this, I'm just going to go, whee! And then you go the other way as well. And you get you get the idea. You can get the crosses on there. So I'll I'll send you over to you, Barbara. Absolutely. I'll finish these off, get them in the oven, and I'll see you a little bit later. Okay. Um, Barbara, just a second. I think you should be able to hear me better now. Um, I've switched to a second camera, and that should be working better as well in terms of video and audio. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's can you hear me better now? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, if you want to get started and then come back to me in a second, please. Okay, I'm sorry for my voice. Um, I've tried to teach my kids to share stuff. Unfortunately, they shared their cold with me. So yeah, bear with me, I'm doing my best. So my turn is Italian Easter. Um, when there is something, when it's come to good food, yeah, I think all countries want to claim the right to name it. Yeah, that's why it's called Italian Easter um, bread, although we bake it in Austria too. So let's start. At first, we need 40 gram of unsalted butter. Let me just put it in here. Two hundred and fifty grams of milk. This is a very popular recipe, by the way, also in Italy. We, we love this one over Easter holidays. It, it's fantastic. I didn't know it was also made in Austria, uh, but yeah, it's absolutely delicious and the bread is so tasty. Uh, does it go to breakfast on Easter Sunday in Austria? Yes. <laughs> then we need one and a half teaspoons of dried instant yeast. Um, I usually use a fresh yeast. You can buy that in um, supermarkets like Ali said or in Polish shop they used to have that too and we need sugar yeast always needs sugar or honey to do its job and in the measuring cup and we are warming them now for three minutes at 37 degrees <coughs> Sorry. During that time, uh, uh, while that was, <laughs> I just want to say, um, if you don't mind me, Barbara, that all I've done, I've sauteed my shallot and the oil, and I've added the broad beans, and now I'm adding um, water. About 150 grams of water, and, uh, and then we let that cook together. So this particular recipe, you will see how the pasta gets gets cooked in the actual sauce so in order to make the sauce we are cooking the broad beans together in the in the actual water and then again um, we'll take about um about uh, 20 minutes i'm adding some salt as well just a, a teaspoon of uh, coarse uh, salt and that's about 20 minutes for the for the sauce um, 
to be coming to life. Okay, so over to you again. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. So in the recipe, um, it says that you should color the eggs beforehand. Um, I thought this food coloring um, at Lidl or Aldi, if you can get them at the moment, or Amazon is selling it. Um, in the description, it usually says that the eggs should be warm. So the food coloring is working with the eggs. Um, it's working with cold water and cold eggs too. So um, I've not done that stuff because actually my son would be really upset if I colored the eggs without him. Let's see, there we go. And another thing, for, we need this coarse sugar, pearl sugar. Um, it's <coughs> You can buy that stuff actually in every supermarket in Austria. It's really hard to get here in UK, UK but I found it in Polish shops, Waitrose and um, Amazon. Sometimes Ocado, but it's um, most of the time sold out. So we have 45 seconds to go. <coughs> I'm so sorry. That's the great thing about it being virtual, Barbara. We can't catch anything. It's totally fine. <laughs> it stays in my family. <laughs> it's probably worth worth saying that Barbara's actually having complete renovations of her house, um, which actually is a great reason to get a Thermomix for any friends who we know doing renovations, because we can still cook these wonderful meals just with a flat surface and our Thermomix and a knife and a chopping board. Yeah, I did it actually the whole week. Um, my, my thermal mix has the cleanest spot in the house. And um, yeah, no takeaway. It's all fresh cooked. So the next step is 450 gram of strong white flour. We have that here. half of a teaspoon fine sea salt. Um, I'm usually using already salted butter so I can skip that step. And one medium egg. There we go. So we will first mix this at speed four. <laughs> Yeah, this recipe is available, of course, on Cookie Do, and so on Cookie Do UK. So you can all find you can find this recipe on um, on it as well as the hot cross bun recipe. Um, regarding my pasta dish, that's on Cookie Do Italia. Um, but what we'll do, we always send out, uh, and Kita always sends out um, a follow up email, um, and that will be an English translation of my recipe and the link to all the recipes featured today. <laughs> So it's now kneading I know, um, for four minutes. <coughs> Gosh, I'm so sorry. I can't really leave that aside. <coughs> Don't worry, Barbara, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And uh, that's the beauty of it is that we decided to carry on anyway with the class. Um, you woke up with the sore throat and <laughs> you're not feeling very well, obviously, and Kita was taken ill. So yeah, we decided to carry on for our customers. So we are here and um, I'm sure they'll understand if there is any, any problems with, um, with the class itself, but we decided to carry on for the company. So that's the beauty of it. That's, uh, that's absolutely fine if you can't talk, don't worry about it. We enjoy, we're enjoying um, your creation anyway. We'll be seeing what happens. So when it stops kneading, it looks like that small tiny ball. But after two hours, you get this wow. fine and fluffy. So we take that out now. Just let me change the camera. It's an easy dough to work with, yeah, with by hand. Yeah, it doesn't look very yeah. sticky. Yeah, it's nice. Not sticky at all. So there are a couple of ways um, how to braid the dough. 
um, the original way from cookie do is to twist it around an egg. So we will just cut these two pieces. Um, I'm using a silicone mat actually, um, so I don't mm -hmm. have to bat. Um, so here we go. It's very good that you're showing us how to actually play it together because that's probably the part that many of us find um, probably tedious, but actually it's not that difficult, is it? I can see how you're showing us how to do it. That's actually very easy. It's really easy. And what I do is I stretch it in the ends, put it together and cover where the ends meet. And then you put in your egg in the middle. And then you leave it to rest for um, for another hour before you put it in the oven. Um, when it um, when it braved again, when it's it, it's double doubles the size, you just put on the egg. You can do that straight away after you've finished with the braiding, and then you put on the coarse sugar on the side. How many of those breads will that dough make, uh, Barbara, approximately? Uh, I've, I've made the recipe a couple of times. Actually, we prefer that way in Austria. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Braid it like that. Um, when, you, when you make base combination, then it's enough for three eggs and five of those. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll leave that aside and yeah, I think it's your turn again. That's okay, that's okay. Between this um, Easter bread and uh, the hot cross buns, oh my God. I'm <laughs> making me hungry, both of you. <laughs> I can almost smell them. Um, fantastic. <laughs> I would like to say to our customers watching is that um, this is uh, towards the end of the month now. Um, up until the 31st of March, which is Wednesday, we still carry, um, we, we are still offering our 0% uh, finance um, on the purchase of a TM6. So if we have anyone um, who's not a TM6 owner, or if any of you current TM6 owners know of anyone, interested in taking advantage of the possibility of paying affordable um, monthly installment, which is just 12, 12 monthly payment of 95, 75, then please let us know, uh, go back to your advisor, let them know um, about uh, your, yourself in this, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be happy to help you place your order by, by Wednesday, okay? That'd be, it's a very popular offer that usually um, um, proves extremely popular um, with our customers. Sorry, Barbara. Okay, Fabrizio, um, if you like to, I can show you how we break, how we break that action in Austria. So let me start from the middle. Okay. Wow. So mesmerizing, Barbara. It looks wow. amazing. <laughs> you done it so quickly. I don't think I'll be able to do that that quick. <laughs> you just have to be careful because when it's rising, it really it gets big. So leave a lot yeah. of space um, between them. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so you can make big ones actually, which is nice. Um, it reminds me, you know, when we do. At some of our demonstrations, we also do the milky bread. We, we try to, to make those shapes and braid together. And it's um, really nice. Also, I know some countries like in Greece, something they, they like to make a similar bread um, over Easter. And uh, you can also top it with flaked almonds, which is really nice as well. It's a nice alternative um, with some almonds on top of your bread. Baba, you're okay there? Yeah. 
Hi, your little one. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Do you keep them busy painting the eggs as well? Yeah, does it, does it work as a trick <laughs> to keep them busy? Fabrizio, so, how long have you got on your uh, sauce? How many more minutes? Right, okay, so my sauce is cooking. Uh, we've got nine minutes for the sauce to go. And then, so Perfect. basically what's happening, what's happening now is just the, 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 um, the broad beans are being cooked in water. So at the end of the nine minutes, I'm going to blend all that together, yeah, as if it was a soup or a puree. But it's not, it's just, and then I'm going to throw the pasta in it. Now the recipe um, usually recommends this pasta shape, which is the bow tie, or also known as farfalle in Italy. And um, of course you can choose any other pasta shape, but I decided to go for the, the one featured in the, in the actual recipe. So the pasta will cook in the, in the, in the sauce, and then I will add the salmon at the end. Are you ready to show something else about your hot sauce, Vanzelli? Is it glazing time? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I just thought I would show you how to make the marmalade glaze and then um, uh, when yes. they're ready to come out the oven, which isn't for another uh, seven minutes, um, we'll put it straight on. Um, so back to the uh, recipe, I've just got my clean mixing bowl. And then you just need 25 grams of light brown sugar. So I'll pop that in there. And then um, 45 grams of milk. Throw that in there. And then one tablespoon of orange marmalade. And you'll be um, very pleased to know, uh, Fabrizio, this is an Italian marmalade. Smells Ooh. delicious. But I'm sure you <laughs> could use any kind of marmalade. I just thought I'd make my hot cross sure. ones that that big special. <laughs> um, and then you just whiz that all up for um, one minute on 80 degrees. So it's just mixing it and melting it together. And then I'd really recommend um, if you have some kind of brush, I've got a silicon brush um, and you're just gonna uh, sort of glaze those hot cross buns when they come out the oven. And the recipe does tell you to do that straight away so that the warmth of your hot cross buns just kind of absorbs that uh, marmalade mixture. And the great thing about this cookie dough recipe is this is the perfect amount of marmalade glaze. So you need every, every uh, morsel of it. Um, but yeah, it's very, very easy to make and just makes those hot cross buns delicious. I think some, some people, they think they struggled making the, the actual, uh, the, the actual crosses, you know, <laughs> on the, on the bun. So I really want to see how you're going to make that. Uh, cause I'm sure I usually get asked, how do you do that? How do you, but I think you're going to show us. Yeah. Oh, I actually, the crosses. Yeah. I actually already showed you, but maybe the, um, the, yeah, yeah. So you just put all the, the mixture icing, yes. in the, in the yeah, piping bag, yeah. you snip the end, and literally, because all your buns are kind of um, sort of have have um, grown to fit your tray, you just run your hand kind of up and down, up and down, and you know it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because that just gives it the authentic appeal. You don't want to give someone something so perfect that they can't believe that you've made it and don't actually believe you. Um, so it's actually the rustic look, I think looks absolutely fine. Um, I'll take a picture and, and you'll see they're not perfect, but I think, I think it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they look amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I've got there for four minutes until they come out um, of the oven. It's a race is on Fabrizio, whether you're a uh, clean. Okay. <laughs> Well, the race is on, absolutely, but I think you'll win because mine is five and a half minutes. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, during that's that, perfect. During, yeah, <laughs> during, oh, look at that. <laughs> so, um, during that time, just something about cooking pasta, um, uh, because again, many customers still choose to uh, cook pasta in the, in the traditional saucepan, which is absolutely fine. Um, and many don't know that you can actually cook spaghetti as well. So long pasta is absolutely fine to cook it in the thermomix. Um, the way it works is that you obviously boil the water in the thermomix, uh, usually about 
um, 10 minutes, okay? Uh, temperature 100 for about um, 10 um, to 14 minutes. Now, when I say between 10 and 14 minutes, it's because it depends on the, on the amount of pasta you wish to cook. So um, today I'll be making, uh, I'll be using 320 grams of, um, of pasta. But if I wanted to go for the maximum um, amount of pasta, uh, which I could say in a thermomix, which is 500 grams, then I would use one liter, uh, 500 grams of water. Um, whereas today, 20 grams of pasta, or a liter, um, 200. Now, you, you would have noticed that I did use one liter, 200 of wool. Uh, reason being is that I've got my, my broad veins in there. So that adds volume to the water, which I've only used 750, but because of the broad bean, uh, so the sauce reaches that um, uh, 12 pretty much um, amount of, of liquid where the pasta is going to cook. So the way we cook the pasta is that um, we set the timer for the amount shown on the pasta um, packet yeah. and cook the pasta for about, uh, for that time, at 100 degrees, um, some recipes will say 98 degrees, speed one in, in reverse. So we use the reverse plate uh, because we don't want to cut the pasta, obviously. Okay. Um, now, being Italian, I, you know, it's expected of me, <laughs> of me to say something else about the pasta. So if you want to have it al dente, so this particular pasta requires 10 minutes cooking. Um, I, I'll, I'll go for eight minutes. So I always go for less. Less is more. Let's remember that. Eight <laughs> minutes um, would be the time that will set my pasta, okay, my thermomix to cook the pasta. So it's always advisable to use um, to go for less, and then you've got time to plate it. And by that time, the pasta still cooks in the sauce anyway, so it's absolutely fine. We trying to say something, at least. No, I was just loving all the the Italian, authentic Italian pasta <laughs> tips. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You've got to slightly cook a bit less, and that, that's the trick. <laughs> it, it's actually really good um, when, uh, you know, as a Thermomix user, you transition. So I, I did use to, as you say, always use the um, saucepan, but actually I've recently started doing my spaghetti in the Thermomix. It's just so easy. As you say, you know, heat the water, salted water, and then you, and it's really fun kind of the spaghetti pokes up and kind of turns around and around and around and, around and then drops through. But very important to say that you cannot put more than 500 grams in, otherwise your, your water will start bubbling up over the top of yeah. your um your yeah. <laughs> the, 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 absolutely the maximum is 500 grams of um, of pasta yeah also because we're using 500 grams of pasta and then one liter 500 of water let's don't forget that the maximum capacity of the of the uh thermo talking about m6 is 2.2 liter um the tm31 uh, i know we have uh, uh, TM31 users as well on the call, that would be slightly less than that. So we have to be always be mindful of the um, model of Thermomix we've got. Um, so for example, this recipe that I've made is also compatible uh, with a TM31 um, uh, model, but obviously I wouldn't go um, that far to actually use it uh, with 500 grams of, um, of, um, of pasta. Okay, just in you know, order not to overstate the boat. How are we doing there, Ellie? Well done, yeah? Yes, you, you probably heard I my timer. Yes, and, and I can so smell it. So there are it. the I hot cross almost... buns, and I'm just going <laughs> to immediately put the glaze on them, which will just lighten them. And actually, mm. I find all, all ovens are obviously different. Um, the recipe says 210. Uh, 210, but I think that's too hot for my oven. So I, this time I did them on um, 200 and for about 15 minutes, the recipe says 15 to 20, definitely err on the, the 15 minute side. And actually this might even be a, a kind of minutes too long, but actually I quite like a kind of crusty crust and then the dough inside. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to just finish putting the glaze on and you know, you can see the crosses aren't, you know, they're not perfect, but you can certainly tell that they're hot cross buns. 
Um, so even if you feel like you've never piped before, it really doesn't matter. It's, um, yeah, so I'll just leave those to, to rest for a few minutes and then I'll plate them up to show you at the end. Fantastic. And I'm, okay, I'm just about to blend the broad bean and water. Okay, so 30 seconds on speed eight. Going to be a bit Okay, to break the silence, um, I've I've made the, the equipment already um, twice this week. This one is from four days ago, and when you break it into two, you can see that it is still nice and fluffy, and not hard at all. It was actually quite hard to save that for my family because usually <laughs> it's not surviving longer than five minutes when it comes out. <laughs> And here we're going to use the Wow, Barbara, that looks delish. That's actually a pretty nice present for friends and neighbors when you wrap it up. Yeah, that's so nice. And obviously, um, we still can't travel too far um so actually we want to you know we'll be spending time with our neighbors and things same with these hot cross buns i know my neighbors will get a little knock on their door uh today have a few uh hot cross buns so it's uh i did it last year actually after i finally cracked it with the uh with the the yeast they all got a nice little easter hamper of goodies that's my that's my go-to. I'm so sorry that we are so noisy with the renovation. <laughs> for my name, <laughs> I think they're just waiting for more of it. <laughs> well, in the in the meantime, I put my my pasta in the in the in the sauce, which I've made by blending the uh, the cooked broad beans and um, and the water. So now the pasta will be cooking, as I said, for about um, well seven and a half minutes less now. Eight minutes, and then what I'll do. Uh, the recipe would ask me to add um, tinned salmon, but I won't be doing that. What I'll do, I will add um, smoked salmon um, towards the towards the end of the cooking time. Uh, smoked salmon doesn't need cooking either, so it's just a matter of just um, adding to the bowl and um, and that's just um, let the thermomix. Um, continue uh, mixing and cooking for one more minute, and, uh, and then the pasta will be ready, and I'll be plating it for you here so that you can you can see um, how easy it is um, to cook pasta. Because sometimes I think some people find it a bit intimidating because they feel they think the pasta is going to get cut by the blade, but that's not that's not the case. Absolutely, feel free to use it and use the thermomix in um, in reverse reverse mode because that's the safest way to cook pasta as well as rice. If you make a risotto, you will see all the risotto recipes that will always use the, rever the reverse mode. Okay, so we use the back, um, the back of the blade in order not to cut um, the rice um, and not to make them. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any questions for us in the meantime, either um, um, in writing or in the chat or if someone would like to just ask something, uh, so we'll be happy to answer any questions. No? Okay. Right. Um, then something else I would like to talk about and um, is... Um, okay. How long does it take for the water to boil? Okay, so the, the water will take about um, anything between 10 uh, to 12 minutes, okay? Um, 10 to 12 minutes in the thermomix for the water to boil. Uh, we do 10 to 12 for uh, 1 liter 200 grams of water, and that's for about 100 degrees. Yeah, 100 degrees, uh, 10 to 12 minutes, speed one. And then when 
the water is um, is boiling, then we'll add the pasta. Um, this time we'll use the reverse mode. I think there's a more, another question there. I don't know if Barbara or Ellie can see that. Um, so we can answer I, that. Yes, I can. Hang on. Uh, it was just um it's just one of my customers or potential customers thanking us <laughs> ah lovely okay <laughs> um, um as i was saying there's a thing i wanted to touch um by these classes now for those of you who've been regularly attending our classes you know we've made quite a few since january we well, course actually december we had the christmas class we had the january uh, we have we have loads of classes the chef class last week um, we've got um, we had the polish class as well um, last week as well and uh, we've got two more classes coming up um, and one is the uh, manual class so it's all about cooking recipes in manual mode instead of uh, rely on the cookie do so um, perhaps some of you would be interested in seeing how to adapt your your uh, favorite uh, family recipe to cook do this will be a great class to attend we'll be giving loads of hints and tips on how to do that okay so because i know that most of you uh, most of our customers uh, definitely my most of my customers are asking about that they to go um, more freestyle so that's a great class for you and um, the other class we've got planned for you in, again in april is the japanese class which will be run by Ankita. As you know, Ankita is our team leader, and she has a um, wonderful insight into the Japanese cuisine uh, because she she lived there as well uh, a few years ago. So uh, personally, I can't wait for that class. To be honest with you, I'll be glued on my um, home computer to to watch that one. Now we haven't, um, I believe, we haven't actually confirmed those dates just yet. But again, for all of you on the call, please. Um, get back to your advisor, um, or if you already signed up to their newsletter or something, make sure you're in touch with them to find out um, the date uh, for those classes. So I said, um, we're estimating the to, to be taking place middle of April and the Japanese class towards the end of April. So um, watch this space because they are both very interesting, very interesting classes. There Any is more a question for Ellie. Um, have you adapted the hot crust buns with different fruit or chocolate versions at all? And if so, do you change the spices used? Or I mean, any of them? Um, well, actually, if you search hot crust buns on Cookie Do, there are actually a, a selection in there. I did see that there was a chocolate um, a hot crust bun yes. on there. So if you want to go for chocolate, I would follow follow the recipe. What usually happens is best to follow a recipe first, and then once you've made it once, then you can do your um, adaptations. Um, remember the um, just this week, there's this fabulous new thing from uh, Thermomix on Cookie Do, whereby you can actually save your filters. So you create create a profile on your Cookie Do account, and you can say what language you want to see the recipes in and the country of origin. So now, um, not only do I have the UK, I've also got America, um, Canada, Australia, um, and Switzerland as my countries. So when I search hot cross buns. I'll get the wealth of um, recipes that are on all those uh, different countries. Absolutely, that comes really handy. We only had the, we had this feature added two days ago, and um, my customers on the call they'll know that my Australia is my favorite platform. To be honest, I always tell them to look at that. So it's <laughs> so actually comes really handy to be able to access it um, to have it uh, as a default in our search instead of having to manually select it. So that's really handy. I can see there's more uh, questions or something on the chat. I don't know if you can read it if I can't reach that um, chat. I don't know if you can see I that. think they were talking about how delicious these hot cross buns look. And I'm sorry, I actually oh, just have to I think look at that. Beautiful you try inside. One. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh. You're making us jealous. You're making us really hungry now. Both of you. <laughs> I actually didn't have breakfast, so it's perfect. And as oh, I said, I just wouldn't I wouldn't even toast it because it's just beautiful, very soft. Um, yeah, so that's 
the great thing about hot crust buns, you know, if you've got, if there's any left in a week's time, which there won't be in our house, then you can toast them. <laughs> no, there won't be. I was asking, yeah, how long do they last for in your house? But I don't think they last for long. Um, <laughs> what I'll do now, I'm just adding my smoked salmon, but again, it's just an optional. Um, you, if you want to keep it veget um, vegan, you can, of course, do that. And um, just give it a little stir. Um, Smoked salmon is my favorite variation to this recipe, to be honest, instead of the tinned um, salmon, but you can use either, or as I said, none um, is absolutely fine. And just continue the cooking for about 30, um, 30 seconds, and then it's ready to be, to be plated. Um, absolutely fine. So as you can see, it's actually very easy. Um, you don't have to uh, early your stem. Maybe those, those so maybe. Um, yeah, it's actually easy to be cooking everything at the same time in the thermomix. So the sauce, um, the sauce and boil the pasta at the same time instead of having two pans on the traditional hob or one saucepan for the pasta and the sauce in the thermomix. So it's easy to have both at the same time. Here we go. So two seconds to go. Okay. And then all I've got to do is just to add some pepper. I'm not going to add um, more salt because salmon is, um, is salt, smoked salmon is salty. Um, so I don't need to add any more. Yeah. And then I'm going to just pour it there. Okay. So it's really nice and creamy, yet there is no, there's no cream at all. And um, I can just show you, I can close, so you can actually see, so you can possibly see the bowl, but I'll show you my plate there. Fabrizio, it looks like it makes quite a large yeah. amount. How many people would you say that would serve? Well, uh, it says uh, four people, 320 grams of pasta um, and the salmon and the broad beans is quite a generous amount. So it should serve um, four people. Again, you could increase the amount of pasta and go for 500, but I think that's absolutely fine. Um, and it's ready. The pasta is not overcooked because again, we cooked it less than the recommended time and um, ready to go. So, I think we've got it. Yeah. <laughs> we got there. Um, I think, I don't know if there is any more questions for us. Um, no? Okay. One, one I like I think there might be one there. Yeah, it um, it's thanks to Fabrizio's recipe. Um, it showed that you can actually cook everything just having a thermomix in your kitchen. We are renovating the house at the moment. And um, if, if you start thinking out of the box there, yeah, it's amazing what you can cook with only a serving mix in the house, without a hop in the oven, and you still have warm lunch every day. Um, you can even cook warm breakfast for the kids, yeah. Um, we don't have a kettle over there. I use the serving mix as a kettle, so it's an amazing tool, especially when you run away. <laughs> so, absolutely. Absolutely, you're absolutely right, actually. You're, you know, a crystal clear example, Barbara, of how you can make the most of your thermal mix, especially when you've got um, um, renovation taking place at home. And obviously, we may not have access to your cooker, to your kitchen, set, and so you have the, the actual thermal mix, which you can have in any in any room. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, if there's no more questions, then we can um, just wrap it up for everybody uh, with a big thank you. I'd like to thank my colleagues, Ellie and Barbara, for uh, um, pulling things together and deciding to carry on with this class today. Um, sorry about the technical uh, difficulties that we've had, uh, me with the sound and uh, some other um, connectivity issues that we had, but we wanted to do this for you, our customers, and we hope you enjoyed it. We hope to see you at the next class. As I said, keep an eye on, um, on the manual cooking class as well as the Japanese class coming up. And we wish you all the best. Um, Ellie, Barbara, I'd like to say something before we say goodbye. 
No, just thank you very much for coming and, and do keep referring us and talking about your Thermomix because um, as we've all experienced, it's great having a Thermomix in the home. It just means when you're cooking uh, meals after meals, you can never get bored with uh, the amount of recipes to search for on Cookie Do. And, um, you know, meals are exciting and fun despite not being able to go out to eat. <laughs> Absolutely. Barbara, would like to add something before we go? <laughs> I think that was a bye-bye. <laughs> okay, don't worry, don't worry. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. And, and a big love to our team leader, Ankita. She's been watching us, I know. And I hope we did you proud. Uh, look after yourself. Take care. And we'll see you. Thank you, Fabrizio. Soon. Great. Thank you. Really great to see everyone. Bye. Happy Thank Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. Thank you.